play with they play with some. This is a game they lose again. I've said it a few times. This is a game they lose like a month and a half, two months ago. You know, right. they just kind of they just they lose it down. twice. They yeah. lose this yeah. game. They lose this game based off of the crappy first half effort and the fact that it entered the fourth quarter close. This is a game they yeah. lose multiple ways. You know, they they mm-hmm. could have lost it in a blowout because they came out crappy yep. in the first, or they could have been close in the fourth with some half-ass, you know, uh, you know, empty calories effort to make it closer in the third and lose it in the fourth because they'd done that a bunch. They're not doing that. The friggin' clamps they put on these guys in the second half was unbelievable. You know, yeah. I yeah. mean, and this yeah. was. This was lockdown. This, it was. It and was. it wasn't a fluke. This wasn't like Hawks just shot poorly. The You could see the intensity, the switching, the challenging, the shooters, every shot, it, it, you know, it, possessions going late into the clock. Everything was contested. It was a slog for Atlanta in that second and, half. Everything, and that, everything was earned. And, that, and they're starting to figure out that's how you've got to win games when you don't have your A game. You – no, no matter what you're doing offensively, no matter who's in or who's out of the lineup, you have to defend at a high level because if you do that, you have a chance to win every single game. And, and they did that in the second half. First half, I thought they were just kind of going through the motions. They were okay, but they weren't great defensively. Second half, completely different animal. Uh, Atlanta could not do anything. And I, I don't know Trey you know, wasn't on top of his game, but, but hell, the Celtics went out their second leading score for – all right. but the first what five minutes of the game. So Great. I'm not yeah. trying. I'm not trying to hear that. You know, ooh, they yep. did it with, because Trey was hurt. Come on now, very stop. Sad. Very stop. sad. So yeah. this was a good win. This was a this was a good win for them. This this was. And the, um, the the difference, and I've said this before, but one of the reasons why they're winning games in the fourth quarter, John pointed out, because they they're believing that they can win the games, and I think they've yeah. turned the they've turned the corner. And that if this winning streak or this recent, if you want to say, oh, well, they're beating bad teams, you go ahead and say that. But winning games allows you to feel that you can win games and gives you the confidence to believe that you're going to win and not believe that you're going to lose. Like I honestly felt that this team played to lose, or like almost like they they were just waiting to lose the first half of this season until they started to see wins pile up. And then, you know, the more you see it, the more you believe it. And then you, you just kind of close things out. You know, you're, yeah, I get they're playing with a, a purpose on defensive end that they weren't playing with previously. But I honestly think that when you start to string together wins, the confidence builds and you expect to win instead of expecting to lose or expecting to blow a lead. Yeah, so That's the biggest difference I see. And, and, and if that came at the expense of a bunch of crappy teams, so be it. I mean, they, it got them to where they are now, and they can still beat. Hopefully, they can, you know, use right. that mentality to beat better teams. And it's the mentality thing where, like, bad offense is what has killed them this year because it mm-hmm. translates to bad defense. You yep. know, they, they, you know, Tatum last game was a, gr- a classic example of he just got in his own head, was frustrated about a, sh- a couple early fouls, the shot wasn't falling, and just took himself out of the game. That's the kind of stuff you saw early in the year. This this game, offense looked horrible in that first half. Absolutely horrible. Um settling, just disjointed all over the place. Uh, mm-hmm. and 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 it, it affected their defense. They give up 65 points. That doesn't happen to this team. And all then right. they came out and did the opposite, which is like, all right, defense will set the tone and that'll get the offense rolling. And that's how they have to play. You know, yeah, Jimmy and I, yeah, I know Jimmy, you you and I kind of agree, like, it's a hard sell to win based only on defense because you have to, you got to, you got to bring it nonstop. In a seven-game series, it's night. difficult, yeah. And it's hard in a seven-game you know- series, too. Uh, and so that's where those offensive deficiencies you're worried about. But it's the only path they have to winning. It it's, is. It's you have to do that. A hundred and you know, just balls to the wall the whole time, and then you you look for Tatum or Tatum and Brown to just carry you, and that's it. That's the only that's their main formula. Try to play unselfishly and hope that those guys are having good nights shooting the ball, and that's what happened tonight. It was more like, often than not they defense, are having defense yeah. clamps down, Tatum takeover. Right. You have that's that's your only path to getting out of the first round of the playoffs. I I, I just don't see them having the type of firepower to shoot their way into the next round. They just don't have it. And, and that's, that's, and that's okay. Because when you think about what they're able to do defensively, 
Um, the way that they're able to like literally flip a switch and just put the absolute clamps on teams. We've seen them do that. Uh, we've seen, and, and it's not just been like one or two good players. I mean, they've done this against, I mean, remember when they beat Philly by like 30 points in Philly, Joel did not make a basket until the middle of the second quarter. I don't know if there's been a team he has faced all season where he went that long without getting a basket or a dunk. Uh, everything he got up to that point prior was, was, was for the free throw line. So they have the ability to put the clamps on the best of the best in the NBA. And if you're able to do that, that's going to give you a chance to win home, road, doesn't matter. Damn, Bobby, where the hell are you at? <laughs> We're upstairs in the lounge. What do you know about upstairs, Sherrod? This is the time on Sprockets when we dance, Bobby. I, I need to see Bobby's – yeah, can you go big screen Bobby here for a second? Can we go big screen Bobby? You want to fire it up? No, Bobby. Oh, Bobby damn, solo. son. All, one man show right now. Look Yo, I thought your audition was tomorrow, Sherrod. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn, Bobby, no I thought new edition was tomorrow. I'm the, I'm the reserve, Jimmy. Okay. <laughs> Just wow. in case. We got that. We got that. Well, uh, does anybody see Joe Sway? No, Joe no, Sway. I, I, I haven't been able to see Sway. I haven't seen you all night. I can't let you on. The, your camera's not working. Sorry. He's been sitting okay. there in, in darkness the whole time in the window. Oh, I saw Bobby, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> What you got for oh, us, Bobby? Wow. What you got for us? Yeah, wait, you look you look like the rock over there, man. I don't think I'm gonna talk for the rest of the time. We should let Bobby do it. This is yeah, this is this is great. Great game. Oh, Love the effort. No, I was not worried. great, Bobby. Not great. I was I was What's worried. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, phenomenal. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> what are we I don't know. Did it did it rise to phenomenal? Because I have great second half was, phenomenal. Yeah. Second, yeah, second half, half was phenomenal. Defensively. Yeah. Not bad. Well, I, Sorry, Bobby. Second quarter, disaster, really. One of the worst quarters all year. And then second half, phenomenal. There you go. Uh, I like the fact that they're resilient in this spot. You go, you give up that 37-point quarter. Brown gets hurt very early in this game. And then Young comes back from his injury and starts peppering you with some shots there. The defense was just flat out dominant in that third quarter. It, as good as it's looked over the last month and a half here where it's reached an elite level. Good to see that return because it had been an uneven four or five games or so there. Uh, nice to see a variety of lineups having success in that regard. Neesmith Smith getting in the mix early in the third quarter and having some success getting stops. Pritchard, I thought, closed you know the early portion of the fourth quarter well there. So a lot of the things that I wrote about early in the week that would worry me about this thing falling apart, like one injury to any important guy, uh, you know, the depth have to get involved, the shooting, which wasn't great early in this game, all came together. And I thought Tatum had one of his best games all year, organizing everything and hitting shots. He, he was just great. And they needed it with Brown down. Uh, this was a big, big win to come back from that far down. Felt a lot like the last one over this team. Yeah, I'm just reading the comments about your outfit. So I don't really know what you said. <laughs> But too I'm much. sure it was. I'm sure it was smart. I'm sure it was very good. Too much of a focus on the uh, on the outside here. We gotta focus on the substance, Jimmy. That's true. I just can't. Yeah, I'm I can't, watching I between the comments it. of Bobby, and I'm watching Joe Sway like my friggin' dad trying to like get his way <laughs> on here. Oh my god, uh, it's hard to focus. Did Bobby, you guys what get you the? Uh, what do you think of White? Since you were pretty critical of him uh, about a few days ago. Good. Good to see him going downhill. This is what I talked about after the Pacers game. Too much three-point shooting. If the three's not there for you and it wasn't again for him in this one, go downhill. Good things are going to happen. Wait, don't Rob's touch there. anything. I'm trying to put you on. I had my Rob, headphones on. Don't touch first. anything. Rob's there on the offensive glass. Yeah, you got Horford lurking. Like, There's just a lot of good things coming from getting downhill and being aggressive in those spots. Work for Tatum, too. He got his own put back to go. They were dominant around the glass in this one. So to go inside like White did there, I, I know the talk in the postgame press there was, was it was almost contagious. Other guys started doing it after he did. Grant getting in there. Good split actions. I thought that worked well for the Celtics throughout the early portion of the game. Rob passing from the high What post. did Emay say about uh, that white stretch? Was that something they tried to attack Trey on purpose or it just happened organically? I think it was a little bit organically because you didn't see a yeah. lot of that in the first half. Uh, Might have been a bit of a I, – I think there was a bit of a conversation at halftime about that as well as the defense, of course, Getting too. to the paint, there clearly must have been something said. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I believe he mentioned that briefly there. And yeah, listen, it was contagious. I, like you just had a lot of downhill activity there. And how great was Rob? Like just an unsung performance Active. from him, where every single shot that goes up, he's at least getting a hand on. And then that big three point play late in the fourth quarter with the Hawks lurking still a little bit there. That slammed the door. And and again, th- that was a huge thing because the Hawks went with their kind of spread offense there. <laughs> There's no Capella on the floor. Collins isn't around. So they had nobody there uh, to body up Rob. You know, so he's just shoving Gallinari out of the way there to go up for that rebound. The, honestly, with that lineup out there, they should have just run the offensive jacket from anywhere and let Rob just clean the glass because he could have done it uh, all night there. And, and he makes it have. hard to go small yeah. against you, right? Uh, he, he showed it in that because Pacers game as well. Uh, for that alone, both with tearing down those offensive boards, tip-ins, putbacks, rolling, or just getting his hand on stuff, it's going to be a problem there when you don't have somebody who can kind of who can keep him off that offensive glass. Um, so that was a curious decision by Atlanta. I know why they did it, because they needed shooters on the floor. But that's where Collins hurt you there, because Collins can stretch it. And they couldn't. When they didn't have Capella out there, they had no presence. Yeah, for sure. I think they should have actually taken more advantage of that. Um, you know, at times when he wasn't on the floor and Rob was. Isn't yeah. it funny, by the way, that we last year were saying Capella would be a nice, like, would be a nice comp for Rob? And like, if you asked, if you pulled a thousand Celtics fans right now, is there anybody who thinks that Rob isn't already better than Capella? No, no, and no. I think those like progr- career progression rankings. If you look at those, it's starting to at least level one. I think Rob's actually a little bit ahead of him in that regard at this point. Uh, he's a better offensive rebound. He's one of the best offensive rebounders in the sport at this point. I, one thing I didn't like about him from this game still, you get young inside, finish over him. Yeah, that happened a couple of times where he's firing out the passes to the perimeter right off the catch inside. That's still something he's got to get better at there. But how about Grant Williams? We're gonna talk about some Williamses here. Yes, the wow. people have been waiting for Grant. I said early in the year, his progression was exciting because this is a guy who – I love this guy. This is a guy who <laughs> just gave you absolutely nothing last Grant year. Grant Williams now, is exciting. I mean, he closed over Brown. Phenomenal. And the game, and it worked well. The and defense. Pritchard was closing until they wanted defense there. Um, so that was an interesting lineup. But, yeah, that was – you know, Grant was out there. Yeah, and I – He I was awesome, you, uh, man. I don't think the, the three shooting is obvious. Like, what are you going to say about that? That piece you sent uh, this morning, John, analyzing the Celtics and the title odds and all that kind of stuff, there was an interesting section in there about I, – I forget what the stat was that was thrown around in there. It was something to do with switching and just your overall, like, defensive abilities. It was Celtics defenders by impact per one. Yeah, Grant was the lowest among them, but he was still but above But he was still pretty defender. high, yes, 60, exactly. 62nd percentile. So. Yeah. Like, even the low end of your defenders are like high end of the league. And you think about a team like Atlanta who just can't defend anyone. You started to go in your depth here with Grant, Neesmith, Pritchard, and all three of yeah. those guys I and thought looked good defensively. Four or five of those guys in the 90 something percentile, you know, with Smart and uh, Rob and what, uh, 99th, huh? And That's Derek, crazy. 99%. So, I mean, they were absolutely, uh, that, it was a really interesting read, I thought. Uh, just the way it kind of put the numbers together. Uh, Joe Sway is joining us. What's up, buddy? Nothing much, man. I was in, um, <clears throat> listen, what Eme had to say in, in the, in, in at halftime, I don't know what it was, but it, to me, it, it, it did the trick. I mean, he talked about uh, wanting them to be more physical. You know, he talked about uh, coming out with that same sort of energy, but you look at what Derek White did in that third quarter. I don't think the Celtics had that huge run if it wasn't for him. You know, I, I think it's a testament to the guy stepping up once Jalen Brown went down. You know, Grant Williams obviously is in that conversation, but so is Payne Pritchard. I mean, that's exactly what you want from your guys. You know, we all have been sort of waiting for this injury to hopefully it's not as serious, but I mean, let's face it, guys. The last what three, four years, there's always somebody around yep. this time of year, right? For the Celtics, especially somebody significant. So hopefully it's not Jalen, but um. These guys certainly answered the call when he went down. You know, I, I think that shows a lot of character out of this team, especially from guys like Pritchard and, and Grant Williams. Grant's been doing it all season long, but Pritchard's uh, is picking up steam of, uh, of late, and that's huge. I, I like the fact that you're starting to see guys be the difference in them winning and losing, not named Tatum, not named Brown, because you're going exactly. to need – Yeah, I mean, you, you, I mean, think back to what, what Peyton Pritchard did a couple of games ago. They don't win that game without him. You think about what Grant Williams does tonight, or what White. Derek White does tonight. 
they don't win this game without those guys stepping up. And that, yeah. to me, again, that's when you start going from being, you know, a group of guys who play together to being a team. And, and, and earlier in the season, they were just a bunch of guys that were playing together. Yeah. Now they're looking more and more like a team, a team that can now – the next step is being a team that can win, and then the next step is being a team that can win at a high level. And they're, they're trending in that direction, but they're not there yet. This has been my biggest fear all year, Josue. I said, if you no, if you ask me going into this game, if you lose Brown in the opening minutes, is there any chance the Celtics win? I'd say no way. Because you know, I will even look at a smart, a white – uh, any of the critical parts, like even Grant, I think you'd lose a lot if you lost a guy like him the injury. Brown and Tatum, forget about it. And you come, you go down 17 and win that game without Brown. I did not think this team had that in the cards. And the Hawks aren't great. I thought they, you know, Young's injury helped as well. He didn't look the same in the second half. They do themselves in with how bad they are defensively. But it's a major feather in your cap to win a game without Brown. 